I'm just going to quickly just uh, do um, a bit of recap just to catch you up with us so that uh, you won't feel uh, kind of uh, left out or just going to jump into the middle like uh, you could thinking like we don't know where you guys started from or what you guys been talking about but uh, we've been talking about <clears throat> uh so we started the, the new series uh, last week we've been talking about when this time comes when this time comes when this time comes and it, it simply means when this time comes what are we going to do when this time comes, um, are we going to allow this time uh, to kind of wipe us away with this time? Or are we just going to stand our ground in Christ Jesus and just just kind of push this time back? So that is what we've been talking about. We're talking about some facts about this time. I'm just going to quickly uh, go through um, those, uh, those facts about this time that we need to know. So that when this time shows up, then we kind of prepare ourselves. Like this is the way, this is uh, what I need to do. This is way, what should be done when this time comes. Uh, number one fact that we talk about, we talk about this time is inevitable. You cannot run away from this time. This time we're always there. And we mentioned something like uh, this time will not knock on your door. This time will just come on unannounced. It will not tell you before it comes. This time we just showed up unannounced. So it is something like uh, we just need to prepare ourselves for this time when it comes. And uh, we mentioned uh, something about um, uh, the obedience is not a prerequisite uh, to avoid this storm. You can't just say, I'm just going to, uh, when I, once, as soon as I can obey the word of God, or I'm walking in line with the word of God, you know one thing, I'm just going to run away from this storm. No, that is not the prerequisite. This storm always comes, regardless of whether you are in the will of God or you are out of the will of God. It will get worse when you are out of the will of God. But when you are in the will of God, is that you can be you can be sure that God can take you or God can raise you up above the storm. So we need to watch out for that. But it is the application, see, application of the knowledge of the word of God that will rise us above the storm. You see, then we can reign over the storm. It is the application of the knowledge, so not the obedience. It is one thing to obey the word of God. It is another thing to apply the knowledge of the word of God. That is when we see the manifestation of the power of God. So you can obey the word of God. If you don't apply the knowledge of the word of God, you can just obey. <laughs> you cannot probably not receive anything. So you might probably not get any result. but it is the application. So it's very important. And number, um, number, uh, number three, uh, we also talk about the storm does not know <laughs> uh, who you are. It does not recognize whether you are poor or whether you are um, <laughs> you are single. <laughs> it doesn't know whether you are married. It doesn't know whether you are beautiful, you are ugly. It does not. It does not care who you are. This storm does not. It doesn't. It does not have any favorite. So we need to be aware of that. It doesn't mean that. Oh, I think this storm is only meant for those people who are rich, or this storm only meant for those people who are uh, who are men, who are just men of God. This storm is only meant for those people. They are kind of a baby in Christ Jesus. No, this storm is doesn't care who you are. It comes to anyone, and it's coming to every one of us, whether young or the old, whether the little baby or the big baby, whatever it is, this storm is always come. Now, number four, uh, I we mentioned that the, one of the fact things that we need to know is like a storm never, Jesus Christ never promised a sweet sailing. He said, the more you get saved, in, you, you become a son of God. Uh, the, the God didn't say that, you know one thing, I am just going to promise you, you will never experience any difficulties or any hardship throughout the journey of your life in Christ Jesus. God never promised that. Never. There's no way in the Bible. God put the promise there for us so that we, but he guaranteed the victory over the star. But he didn't promise that you will never experience this time. So it is one thing, when you come into Christ, uh, you just got into the game. You just like, oh, you are not trying to run away from the, 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 the corrupt world. I mean, when you just got into, when you got saved, you just got into the game. So you just get yourself prepared, you know. But one thing that we need to know when we're in Christ Jesus, we got somebody that is backing us up, which is uh, the Son of God, the Christ Jesus, is backing and just guarantee us victory. So Bible says, in this world, you will, you will experience, you will see, you will experience tribulation in this world. 
but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. So God has overcome the world. What do we need to do? We just need to be cheerful. But we just need to put ourselves in the right position. So when the storm comes, we'll be able to withstand the storm. So there's no sweet selling in Christ Jesus. <laughs> but God has guaranteed us victory in Christ Jesus because the Bible says we are more than conqueror in Christ Jesus. We are more than conqueror. It's not just only being conqueror, but we are more than that. So to see our position in Christ Jesus, if we can only find that, or if we can only know our position in Christ Jesus, everything becomes simple. This time we are even talking about, this storm is not a big deal. I'm not trying to make a, uh, capitalize on the storm like, oh, this storm is a huge storm. Yes, we, we, we can, I, don't want to de- I don't want us to deny that. But at the same time, I want us to recognize that, uh, we, that in this world, we will experience the storm. We can't run away from that. We experience the storm. Just preparing ourselves for that. But the victory always belongs to us. It's been guaranteed. Then I also mentioned number five. I mentioned something about following on what Jesus Christ said about he has conquered the world for us. But uh, there's a one thing that's like, a, uh, it's so sad. I mentioned so sad. The believer, they still go down uh, with the storm because we just fail to recognize our position in Christ Jesus. If you don't know your position or you, if you don't know your position in Christ Jesus, uh, devil or the enemy is always going to take us for a ride every single time until we come to the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus, it makes so much different in our lives. And I believe as we go in this teaching, uh, may God reveal unto us who we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, number six. Number six. Uh, I just said, uh, trying to identify that uh, when we experience, or when we're facing storm, one thing we need to do, we need to know is natural. To experience fear, that is natural. I haven't seen anyone that that's this calm. I mean, storm come against them, and they're just like, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to fear. No, no. The very first thing that comes, fear, the panic just set in straight away. Uh, you can imagine, you, you, you went to see a doctor, you went to the hospital, they gave you uh, a bad report. Uh, when they say, oh, something like, for example, they say, oh, you've got a cancer. Uh, what are you going to do? You're just going to be laughing? No, no, no. You're not going to be laughing. The very first thing that will grip your mind or that will grip your heart is a fear. The question is, are you going to allow the fear to overcome us? Because the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, <laughs> but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So once we keep that in mind, when the fear comes, we need to resist the fear. We need to cast out the fear. We, need, we don't need to entertain fear. So this is knowing who we are in Christ Jesus, knowing our position in Christ Jesus. We need to know that fear will always come, but it's... In the first Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we are not being given the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of the sound mind. Uh, number seven, I mentioned that uh, the, the spiritual growth actually starts from this time. Uh, you cannot uh, just avoid this time, but uh, we need to embrace this time. Don't despise this time. Don't say, like, I don't want to experience this time. The storm is always there, and the storm actually good in a way that it helps us to develop spiritually in Christ Jesus. Because I mentioned that if there's no storm at all, are you going to trust God? Uh, you see, most of the time when the storm comes, God puts us in a position to trust Him. So if we are trusting God in that position, this is how you're going to grow. Because every time, see, we are now depending on God rather than depending on ourselves. You see. The storm is something like you do not know how to deal with the storm when it comes, but you are depending on somebody that knows how to do the, how to deal with the storm, which is Christ Jesus. But we depending on Christ. Now we know that we can grow through that in Christ Jesus because the growth starts from the storm. Because he God is in a, in a way we have been put in a position to trust God. We have been put in the position to trust God. So there's no need for us to despise this time. But what we need to do, let us embrace this time. We just need to know when this time comes, how can we deal with this time? How can we undo this time? How can we allow God to help us to rise above this, above this time? See, and something I mentioned, very important for us to know, uh, God does not cause this time. Because so many times we think, uh, in any circumstances we find ourselves, or in any situation we might probably be going through right now, it is not the will of God to put us in that position. 
All right. Another thing is like I want us to recognize one thing. While we are in this world, uh, we're going to face tribulation. We're going to, as long as we're in this world, we're going to face trouble. And trouble, trouble will always come, whether by the enemy or sometimes uh, the devil use people behind. I mean, we will use people to attack us. So storm is always calm. We just need to embrace that. Once we embrace that, I can guarantee us victory belongs to us. And the growth we're going to experience is going to be beyond our imagination. It's going to be beyond our imagination. So we need to know that God does not cause the storm, but God use, uses this storm to work on us. God uses this storm to kind of put our, our, our shape our lives. You, know, you got to kind of removing some certain things. When you're in the storm, some things are being you know, exposed that you're like, oh, this is this is yucky. This is yucky. God's not like, you don't want, I'm just going to remove that. I'm, I'm going to remove this one, remove this one, remove that. Then we become, you know, blameless, faultless in the storm. And we become, we become mature in Christ Jesus. This is one of the, the works of the storm. So that's why I said there's no need for us to kind of try to run away from this time. All we need to do, let us withstand this time. Because God is in there with us to put us over. Just the same way the Bible says that uh, we know that all things work together for good to those that love Christ. You see, so even though in the midst of this time, sometimes we can never, based on our own decision that we make. So we might probably made the wrong decision. Now, sometimes the wrong decision leads us to be in a different kind of storm. And like I mentioned, that there can be different kind of storm. You might probably be relationship kind of storm, or the marriage kind of storm, or let me the work kind of storm. So you're experiencing maybe pressure at work, some certain things happen at work. So that is the storm we're going to face. Or the family stuff, uh, maybe uh, the family, somebody, one of your person or sister, your brother die or something. That is one of the storms. The thing is, how are you going to deal with that when those things happen? So storms come in different forms. They are various. It is not just like a, you are being persecuted because you are serving Christ. That is not only the storm, the way the storm comes, but the storm also comes in a relationship. Husband and wife against each other. Friends and family, they come against each other. You face some certain things. Whether I work pressured at work, how are you going to deal with that? But the Bible says they, we, we shouldn't can't discount that because we think they are not spiritual. But the Bible says that God is interested in every detail of our lives. You see, whether small or little, God wants to know about it. Whether big or small, God wants to help you. But so many times we, we think that like some of the things that happen to us, oh, it is not spiritual. Everything that happened in the church, that is spiritual. That is only one thing I can talk to God about. No, God, God has come down to our level to have a real relationship with us. Like a son and daughter, I'm, I'm here. You need me. I just want to have a chat with you. So God has been longing for us from the day before the creation to have a relationship with us. So this storm does not come from God. God didn't cause this storm, but God uses this storm to work on our lives, to shape our life together. Even though sometimes we've gone astray, even though we disobey God, that leads to that kind of storm we are experiencing. God kind of said, you know what, I'm going to put you back in the right track. I'm going to work on you, shape you, put you back in the right track. Now you can be in my own will. Isn't that amazing? That is the love of Christ for us. It's despite the fact that we ignore him. Despite the fact that we neglect him. We do our own thing. We think like, oh, I don't need God right now. See, God in his own infinite mercy, it's just like, a, it's okay. I have a way to put you back on the track. You see, that is the works of it. That is the love he's talking. The love of Christ. How amazing it is. Don't let us despise this time, but let us embrace this time. Now, today, I'm going to, be, today, I'm going to just mainly going to be talking about Prepare, preparing for, for storm of life. Preparing for storm of life. How do we prepare? Then uh, by the grace of God, next week, I'll be talking. I want to finish uh, that series next week. Next week, you know, sometime today, if you are not in this, uh, we are not facing any storm, uh, this is really good for you. This is teaching you how to prepare for the storm. But next week, if we are in the midst of the storm, uh, I'll be showing you through the word of God that uh, what can you do to rise? above this time. So that's how we're going to finish next week by the grace of God. But today, how can we handle this time? How can we prepare for this time when this time comes? Sometimes it is so important to prepare our mind and our heart for this 
inevitable trials because it's coming. We cannot, just like I can mention before in the form of some of the facts about, about stuff, we cannot run away from that. Uh, the only the only one way you can run away from the storm is uh, get out of this world <laughs> uh, leave this world alone and go to go and be with god uh, the, with the father spend some eternity forever with christ that is the only one way because in heaven there's no more storm in heaven bible says there's no more tears in heaven there's no more cry you see it's a place of rest for us but we don't have to get to heaven before you experience peace See, the peace is out within us. So the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. He said we don't have to get the kingdom of God. I mean, there's a real kingdom of God. We are going to go at the end of the day. But right now, the Bible is saying the kingdom of God is within you. So Christ in us, the hope of glory. We need to recognize that the kingdom of God is right there. So in the kingdom of God, we can experience peace. Because the Bible says we are, though we live in this world, Oh, bless God. Though we live in this world, but guess what? We are not of this world. Our citizen, it is not of this world. Our citizen is of heaven. So there is a tribulation all around us. Well, there's COVID-19 still going on in the world today. But Bible says, it's amazing what God promised, what God said in the book of uh, Psalm 91. Say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. You see, when there's a storm going all around us, say, the shield of God is covering us, the fortress, <laughs> the refuge, because the Bible says, the Lord is my refuge and my strength, the very present help in time of need. You see, we need God, but God is always so much there for us. You see that? Even though the storm are going on all around us, but Bible says this storm will not touch us. You see, isn't that amazing? That is the love of Christ. That is love of the love of the Father towards His children. I don't want us to remember that. So, but the thing is, we need to lay a biblical foundation to know so much stuff about the, the storm of life. Because not knowing or not preparing for the storm of life, guess what? We just prepare ourselves for the greatest risk. Because this storm is coming. If you don't know how to understand, because that's why some things happen to some people as a result of they couldn't handle this storm. Guess what? Some people are committing suicide because they couldn't handle the storm. See, some people are doing some uh, uh, the saddest things you ever thought of because they couldn't handle the situation. Some people, their life been transformed. I've seen that. Um, I was uh, where my I, I usually I previously work my previous work, uh, job um, company. I was uh, sharing the word of God with this uh, with this girl. Um, she's been uh, she wasn't saved, obviously, uh, but uh, her parents they've been separated for a few years right now. So she's been living all alone. Then uh, on when I, this is our work, and I shared the gospel, and she got saved. I mean, she she was weeping, crying when I was sharing the gospel. That said, said, Jesus Christ loves you, and then she was just standing there, boiling her eyes out, and and I said, you know, she was not saying that uh, she wasn't this. Uh, because now she's a very quiet person and because of uh, what happened to the parent because the parent they got divorced so because of that divorce had so much impact on her life ever since she's always been on her own she's become uh, very insecure the insecurities become so strong that uh, every time she looks at it she, she thinks like she's not good enough all because it started with the divorce you see that the parent got divorced because of that. And he said that the, the whole thing just started. He said, if you see me before my family, my parents got divorced, I'm just so so much happy. But ever since the divorce, then they had to, the, the dad had to move away from the mom. And she moved in with the dad. He said that the thing hasn't been healed before, before she moved in with the dad, she, before she moved in with the dad, and the dad got married Immed, almost immediately. So the whole thing was so happened so fast for her. So ever since, she wasn't being herself anymore because she couldn't handle that storm of life, you see. So storm of life can change your attitude, can change your behavior for something even worse than before. That is what this storm can do. See, sometimes some people go down with this storm, but that is God has not called us to go down with this storm. See, God has called us to reign over this storm. If you can know, only know the heart of God, because the Bible says it will not allow anything 
we will not allow us to be tempted more than what we can take. You see, God, God knows, God is God knows that you are able to take this stuff. But I have given you the authority and power to rise again that stuff. We don't have to go down with this storm. God has called us to rise above this storm. If we only know what the will and the plans of the God the Father for us. You see, it is so important for us to know that. But we need to prepare. Sometimes, like I mentioned, if you don't have the biblical foundation about how to face storm, you can definitely go down with this storm. But I want us to kind of uh, know that to that. So, this is a quote I want us to understand. If you can write it down, please write it. It's so important. So, it is your preparation for the storm of life that determines the impact of that storm on your, on your life. So, if you are not well prepared for the storm, be prepared for the huge impact. All right. But if you are fully prepared for the storm, when the storm comes, you just be laughing your way. Out of this time, you just when this time comes, we'll be smiling. You rejoice, like you know there's something because you know something. You know what the word of God says about this time. You know where to go about this time. But you can imagine you haven't prepared this time. You haven't prepared for this time. You can fall big time because you have no idea how to face this time. You have no idea how to deal with this time. But that is one thing that I want to I'm going to show us tonight how to prepare for this time. I'm going to give you an example. Here in Wellington, we all have, uh, we experience an earthquake and we'll be advised uh, everywhere we go, whether in the company, they tell you the procedure, just in case of the storm, this is where you need to go. When there's a storm at work, where they will lead to the, the best exit, right? We, we want, they want everybody to get, even at your house, they even advise us, prepare for this storm. We get all this canned food, we get the water, the kegs of water, we get the first aid, we get all those things ready. Why are we getting those things ready? Because we are preparing for this. And so when this come hit, we know the very first thing what we need to do, what step we need to take, where to go. You see, we can really kind of find our way, well, in the midst of this time. You see, so many times, or most of the times, we are prepared for this storm to survive this storm. You see. You can only prepare to survive this storm if you don't if that storm is bigger than you are and you don't know how to deal with this storm. You see, earthquake, for example. You don't know what to do with the earthquake. You just know when it comes in, all I need to do, get myself under the chair. You see, that's the best way to survive. You see, you have been trained to survive this storm, but you are not being trained to overcome or to rise above this storm. Isn't that interesting? That is the same thing with the earthquake. Say so when earthquake comes, because the earthquake is bigger than you. <laughs> and the the earthquake is not knocking on the door that okay, guess what? I am coming. I am coming on Tuesday. Get ready for me. You know, it's it's on the, unannounced, it just showed up. Because and you can't do anything about this time. And guess what? Now you train yourself, or we have been trained to survive this time. You are not being trained to reign above the storm. You can't reign above earthquake anyway, right? But God has given us something. God has not called us to kind of uh, survive this storm. You see, God has called us to reign over this storm. You see that? Even in the midst of earthquake, physically, you see, we can still reign above this storm. When everything is shaking, you see, you, you, you know, the uh, Bible says, No evil shall befall me, neither shall any play will come near my dwelling. You, see, you stand on the word of God. You can still laugh your way through this storm because guess what? God has called us to rise above this storm. Amen. So it is, uh, it is very important not to have the intention of... Uh, I just want to uh, prepare myself so that I can survive this storm. But let us have the mentality that uh, let me prepare myself to reign above this storm. So that is just the key for us. Train ourselves not to rise, I mean, not to uh, survive this storm, but uh, to rise above this storm. So God has called us to reign above this storm. Just like what the Bible says, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Say, I have overcome the world. Say, when God has overcome the world, that means we have the authority to rise above the storm, not to survive the storm. So important. How to prepare. Now, I'm just going to now talk about just jumping. How to, how to uh, prepare for the storm. 
So there's some, uh, I kind of said, there's about five simple ways, the practical ways, we, what we can do to prepare for this time. Number one, I mean, you bet this is one is going to be there. Study the word of God. This is so important. Um, if you want to survive this time, the very first thing that we need to do, we need to study the word of God. What does the word of God say about this time? What of the, 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 the father say about how we can face this time when this time comes? We need to know all this stuff. So this is so important. And it is sometimes it's uh, it is really sad. Many times when this time hits or when this time comes, you say we instead of uh, going straight to the word of God to get uh, the word of God's opinion, the very first thing we do, which is really sad as a Christian, as a believer today, we go and ask somebody else's opinion about what is said, what they can do about this time. See, the very point of contact or the very point of going straight to is the word of God. What does the word of God say about this time I'm experiencing? How can I face this time? How can I handle this time? How can I overcome this time? But don't let us very first thing that we go and just say, oh, let me ask some friends and family, ah, what can I do in the midst of this time? That's, supposed to, that's not supposed to be the very first thing to do. The very first thing we need to do is go, go straight to the word of God. This is so, so important. This is so important. For me, as an example, I, I've never, ever since I come to the knowledge of this, I don't go around asking people's opinion, what about thinking about what I'm going through. Uh, you can not hear what I'm going through because the very first I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the Father. Father, what, is, what, what do you say about this stuff? <laughs> what am I facing? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it what is going on here? How can I overcome this stuff? I go straight to the Word of God. The Word of God is the very first thing that I go to. I'm not going around and ask people's opinion. I ask the Word of God's opinion. What of God? I'm asking God, what do you think? What is going on here? How can I deal with this stuff? So I would like to encourage us. Don't let us make when this time comes, the time of life is coming. So we've got to prepare for that. We need to prepare ourselves by studying the word of God. How to deal with storm when this time comes. You see that? The very first thing I go to, let us go straight to the word of God. Let us train ourselves to go straight to the word of God and ask, the, let's check the word of God. What does the word of God say about our situation? Instead of just going to friends and family or somebody else and asking for their opinion, we get the wrong opinion. And at the end of the day, it's so sad that God is always being the last resort. After we've asked everyone, we have we don't get any solution. Guess what? We're coming. We are now we're coming to Jesus. We're coming to the Father. Oh Father, you know one thing. They listen say, we're supposed to have come. Instead of taking a long way, we're supposed to have come to Christ right from the start. We get answered quickly. Instead of going around and around, take us so many days. You see that we could have dealt with that so quickly. We can we could have overcome this time so quickly. So let us learn. To, to come straight to the word of God and see what the word of God say about the storm or the circumstances we are going through. Let the, the word of God be the very the very first source we are going to co uh, come contact with. I'm going to show us uh, something about the word of God here. So the word of God is so powerful. If you only know that it's so powerful, we will know definitely the very first thing is the Word of God. Uh, we all know this scripture here, but I'm just going to open anyway. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, um, 4, 12, Hebrews 4, 12. Watch this. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. This is so good. So, for the Word of God, for the Word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active. See that? operative, <laughs> energizing, <laughs> and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. You can imagine. You see, the, the, the sword has got the two, two, two both sides, very sharp. But the Bible is saying that the Word of God is even sharper than that. Isn't that amazing? The Word of God, the most sharpest uh, the sword you've ever seen. God is saying that okay, no matter how sharp those, those, those swords are, Guess what? The word of God is even more sharper than that. <laughs> now watch this. Oh, this is so good. Penetrating to the dividing, oh, dividing of the breath of life, I mean the soul, and the immortal, that's the spirit, and of the shifting, and of the and of the joint and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of the heart 
<laughs> oh, see, if, you, if you look at her here, it's talking about the word of God went through all these three parts, the three dimensions of human being, which is the soul, which is the spirit, the soul, and the body. Look at that. The very first thing, okay, it divides the breath of life, the soul, and the spirit, and of joint and marrow. Joint and marrow is found in your physical body. You see, the three dimensions of human being, the soul, the spirit, and the body. Isn't that amazing? That is what the Word of God can do. That's what the Bible says, the Word that I speak to you, the alive and spirit. So the Word can be used for the spiritual purpose, for the spiritual stuff. It can also work on the physical stuff. So the Word of God is not limited to any circumstances. The Word of God doesn't care about your circumstances. It comes in so powerful to take over to take control of your circumstances if only we can recognize how powerful the word of God is. It's so powerful. And God said, when he speaks, when he sends his word out, he said his word will never return to him on, until that thing is accomplished what he sent the word to do. Whew. Man, this is so powerful. The word of God is so powerful and sharper than any two edges word. Why can't we just make that uh, our very first, the, the very first source that we need to go to when we experience any kind of tribulation, when we experience stress, stress at work, what does the word of God say about that? Circumstances, unbelievable circumstances, we think, oh, this is too big. There's nothing, Bible says there's nothing impossible for God to do. We need to start from the word of God. Amen. Uh, so the, the word of God is just not something we speak i need to mention that in the book of john chapter 1 verse 1 guess what he said he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and god was with word so when you read the scripture guess what we are reading <laughs> we are reading christ we are reading jesus now when you speak the word over the storm of life guessing guess who you are calling into that thing into that circumstance you are calling jesus into their circumstances. See, you are calling Jesus over that situation. When you declare the word of God, you are declaring Jesus over that circumstances. Guess what? And when you declare the word of God to your circumstances, when you declare the word of God over your situation, and what guess what the, the Son of God did? So the Son of God said, like, He take that because now Jesus Christ is our high priest of our confession. He take that. He said, He make that in ways where there's no way for you in the midst of circumstances. See, that is the power of Jesus. That is what God takes it. Whatever you call Jesus to be, or to, whatever you make Jesus to be in, in our lives, that is exactly what it's going to be. If you recognize Jesus as your healer when you get sick, guess what? That is exactly what it's going to do. If you recognize Jesus as your supplier of all your needs, according to his riches in glory, by Christ Jesus, that is exactly what you're going to do. The question I'm going to ask you is, what do we make Jesus in our own lives? See, if we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, so you're given Jesus the authority to Father, Jesus, I want you to lead every areas of my life. But it's so sad this day, we give Jesus guys, some part of our lives. You know, Jesus, you can handle this part of, my, of our lives. I can handle this part of my life. You see, we are trusting in our own strength. We haven't given everything to Jesus. So the only one way we can give everything to Jesus is by coming to the knowledge of God, by submitting ourselves into the word of God. The Bible says, submit yourself unto the Lord and resist the devil and he shall flee from you. You see, you need to have you submit yourself to the word of God by obeying, by making the word of God the very first thing in our lives. Regardless of any situation, you are making the word of God to be very, the very point of contact, the very first source I'm going to. It's supposed to be the word of God. Don't let, don't let us go around and ask other people's opinion about what they think about the situation. Go to the Father, go to the word. Because the Bible says, says he exalts his word above his name. So he takes his word so important more than even his name. So the word of God is so important because the word of God is the same thing as God. Just like our word today, I can't say this is Tosin's word. Uh, Tosin's word is different from Tosin. You see, my word is me. There's no difference between what I say and who I am. What I say, whatever I say, you see, sometimes you receive the authority. Let me give you a, a, a quick example. A, a policeman, 
just like a policeman on the probably uh, intercession is they is they telling the cause uh, the, the car is like oh you come to this direction you come 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 oh you guys wait here all right you guys wait here you guys can come right now watch this you see now you do we obey the policeman when you're doing all this traffic stuff right uh nobody no no one not just random person that just can go there and just doing this and people just listen to that you see but there's authority behind the policeman see when the man the policeman is wearing that uniform we recognize the authority behind that the same thing with our word so that's when you speak the word there is a an author that's authority that goes behind what we speak who is backing this word up is jesus god himself is backing his word up Bible says he confirmed his word with sign following him. He confirmed his word. Let us make the word of God the very first source when we're experiencing or when we're in this time of life. This is how we're going to prepare for this time by constantly making the word of God the very first, by loading ourselves with the word of God. Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you so richly, <laughs> so richly. Let the word of God dwell in us. And I believe that uh, as we continue, as we dedicate our time to this, to the word of God, man, you're going to rise. I mean, you, you, you just, just can't wait. I mean, let this time come. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Bless God. Amen. Now, I'm going to move on to uh, number two. Number two. Say, so affirm God's so sovereignty. Affirm God's sovereignty. <laughs> this is so important. At the, same, the question is, what do we think of God? <laughs> do we know him? <laughs> do we know the King of kings, the Lord of lords? So, Do you know him? Do you know he is greater than all? Do you know him? Do you know the, the creator, the creator of the uh, universe, the creator of heaven and the earth and the sea and everything inside of it? Do you know him? So we need to know how powerful God is. See, God is so powerful beyond what we can think of. See, there's something about God. Nobody created God. See, that is what makes God God. Nobody created. So we have all these gods going around and say, uh, the Buddhas, is it somebody became Buddha? Or is it, we have all this, uh, the big guy with the big tummy, uh, crossing the legs. And all those, they have all those stuff going on. Is it, is it, that's a source to this stuff. See, you can never have source to God. There's no source to God. The moment you find source, to anyone that claim to be God is no longer God. See, this is one thing that differentiates our heavenly Father than any other God. <laughs> than other gods, completely. You see, God, our Father, the God of the Bible, is incomparable. You know, have all this Buddha, you have all this, uh, 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 um, uh, all those other gods and whatever you call them, as you got the, the different names that come like a statue and stuff like that. Those ones, they have, uh, they have source. They have the beginning. You see, the amazing thing about our home God, He has no beginning. <laughs> you can never find the beginning. It is the beginning. It is the end. That is what the Bible says. So there is no source to God. It's amazing. You, you can the, the power of God is unlimited. You see, you, you, the power of God over any situation. And guess what? He created heaven and earth to be, to begin with. So you, you, our time of life is pretty much nothing to him. We need to know who he is in the midst of the sun. You need to know how powerful he is in the midst of the sun. So we need to fix our hearts on Jesus, just like what the Bible says. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the <laughs> very present help in time of need. He always there for us. But we need to know who he is. When this is the time, when you're not experiencing some right now, this is his time, the season of calmness. <laughs> everything is calm. Oh, you see, everything is looking good right now. Everything is looking good. And uh, let, let me tell you one thing. It is easy to encourage people when everything is so looking good. I mean, God, God bless you. You know, you can do this, you can do that. But when you're in the midst of this time, you better be repeating the same encouragement every single time because it is not easy. Everybody can encourage one another when there's no when there's no uh, storm going on, when there's no challenges, when there's no circumstances going on. But when the circumstances hit, when you're in the midst of it, so many times we lose the voice of joy. So many times in the midst of circumstances, <laughs> we allow the devil to take away our joy. 
But in the midst of joy, that is when we're supposed to be shouting for joy. Because the Bible says, in everything, rejoice. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. You see that? You see, God does not care about uh, the circumstance because he knows he can put us over about the circumstance. God sees the circumstance and says, this is nothing. I can handle this stuff. That's what Bible says. Is there anything too hard for me to do? See, nothing too hard for us to do. But we make it hard for God to do something because of our belief system. If we believe, we don't recognize the sovereignty of Christ, the sovereignty of God, the supremacy of God, we miss out on this because we don't, we'll be thinking like, a, oh, I don't think uh, God will be able to handle hand that. See, our belief system already gave us uh, away from that. It's so important to, to be aware of that. Do we trust God to use all things, even our circumstances? For, for our own good and for his glory. If you can only do that, if you can only trust God, I'm not going to trust God to use my circumstances for my own good, but I'm, use, I'm trusting God to use these circumstances to glorify himself. You see that? That's supposed to be our attitude. That's supposed to be our mentality when you're in the midst of any circumstances. I can encourage us today. I pass through my own storms, and guess what? It's still coming. <laughs> It's still coming, but every single time, guess what? God is always putting me over, over every storm. I'm just going to share some of my things I just I went I went through at the end of this stuff. But when we get there, but right now, another thing I want us to uh, to be conscious about is: uh, Do we believe that God is the one that causes? Them? If our belief system is saying that uh, God is the one that's causing this storm, guess what? Uh, you might probably stay in that circumstances for a very, very long time because you are working against God rather than working or cooperating with God. Because your mentality is saying that God is the one causing the problem in my own life. You see? And God said like, a, uh, son, I'm not trying to be helping here, but you are saying that I'm the one causing You see, God cannot work with that. You To cooperate with God, you have to believe in line with the word of God. You can't say that God is causing the situation to happen. See, that's why I say in the beginning, one of the factors that we need to know, God didn't cause the situation. As long as we're in this world, Bible says we are going to face tribulation. And if the tribulation comes, now God is going to use that tribulation, see, to work on ourselves and for God to glorify Himself. You see, we need to recognize that. We need, see, we need to change our belief system when we are going through any circumstances. You see that? Believe that uh, because this world is already is a fallen world. We have seen things happen all around us today. If you go, if you look around the news, I mean, it's always bad news. Never, most of the time, maybe maybe five percent is good news. Majority of ninety percent is bad news. Things are going all around us. So, do you think God is the one causing those stuff? No, because the Bible says in the Second Corinthians chapter chapter four, verse four, it says, "He won the God of this world." Guess what? God of this world has blinded the mind of them that believe. Now, it's referring to the devil. It's a devil take over a long time ago when Adam and Eve they committed uh, high treason and they fell, they transferred the dominion that God has put on has given us the human being and they gave it to the devil. That is why when Jesus, when the devil was tempting Jesus, that if he can bow down for me, guess what? I'm going to give you the whole kingdom. Guess what? Which was delivered unto me. You see that? So if God or Jesus, the devil, was not in control of this world. That would not have been temptation today. Why did they call it temptation? Jesus Christ would have, no. Not the, well, it doesn't belong to you. I cannot bow down before you anyway. See, Jesus Christ recognized who is in control on this world. All this bastard that is going on, do you think God is one cousin? That's just not God. In whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them that believe not. You see, if you can bow down for me, you guess what? I will give you the, all this dominion, whatever you see in this kingdom that has been delivered unto me. Who delivered that? See, when Adam and Eve, they commit sin, say the dominion has been delivered to the devil. Isn't that amazing? That is very interesting. But God, even though, that's why I say, you cannot run away from storms. That is why, don't let us see whatever that we're going through. This is caused by the day. No, 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 no. Let's just glorify God in the midst of this storm. That God is going to, we're going to rise above the storm. And God is just waiting for us. Sometimes God is waiting for so many of us for years to change our our belief system. 
God has been waiting. Okay, son and daughter, I've been waiting for you. Change that belief system. Let me walk with you. You are walking against me right now. I want to walk with you. But because of our belief system, say it's hindering God from doing his work in our lives. For God so love us so much. We need to be aware of our belief system. Now, if uh, uh, somebody might probably be thinking like, oh, well, but this time I'm going through right now, it could be caused by God. Now, so what does the Bible say there? You see, look at the, the Psalm 23, verse 4. Now, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, see that? The word, the darkest valley, <laughs> that means uh, a storm is talking about there. I walked through the darkest valley. Guess what we say? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How can God cause something to you and just say that I, yeah, I want you to experience that, so I will comfort you in it? Uh, that, that is not that is not nice. That's not very nice. How can he comfort you at the same time? He caused something and it's, it's comforting you. What kind of father is that? You see, even though I walk through the darkest valley of my life, that is storms of life. Even though I'm going through this time of life, guess what? Let me encourage us tonight. God is always there for us. Sometimes it might seem that uh, you don't see anything happening. But God is saying, son, I'm with you in that storm. What I want you to do right now, just trust me. Depend on me. I'm, you see, God is almost like God is holding our hands in the midst of storm. You see, God is going through this storm with us. What are we doing to do? let us walk? Let us cooperate with Christ. Let us cooperate with the Father. And guess what? We will walk through that storm in an amazing and wonderful way. But if you kind of believe that God is the one causing this storm, guess what? You will can be, you will be in that storm for a very, very long time until we change that belief system. Amen. To fully or to truly have a successful Christian experience we need to cultivate the habit of meditating on the scripture because it is the meditation of the scripture that unveils the revelation of the word of God into our spirit. See, you can memorize the scripture. See, I don't care how more Bible to you can memorize. See, I don't care if you can quote the, 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 the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. You see, you might not even be able to apply that. You can only quote it. You're just quoting it. It doesn't mean anything to me. But it doesn't even mean anything to God. You can quote it. You know everything. I mean, before I, I, I quote one, you already know where it can be found in, this, in the scripture. You can know everything, but the devil can still ride on you. So it does not matter how much you can quote. The devil can even laugh at you. You quote it, memorize it. But the only one thing that makes so much different is the meditation. See, these two, they're so important. They work any hand. You can't just leave one and just get rid of the other one. That's why I put them next to each other. Memorize and meditate. See, before you meditate, you still have to memorize. <laughs> you see, you can read that uh, the Bible says that uh, by his stripes, I am healed. So you might not want to memorize it either, because to prepare, this is so important to prepare for the storm. Uh, sometimes the, the storm can catch you where there's no Bible around. <laughs> there's no scripture around anywhere. There's no Bible around anywhere. The only, let's imagine that you, you, you went to the beach sometimes. Something happened at the beach forever. Something happened. You could, you, you can't be, you can't be looking around. Guys, can, can I, can I have Bible somewhere here? Can I, you can't be looking anywhere for the Bible. <laughs> the very first thing that you need to know, what have you memorized? You see that? It's so important. Have you memorized anything? And when you memorize, now you give a room for the meditation to come in. I'm not talking about all these that are going on in the world today, all these that kind of, I'm not talking about that kind of meditation. I'm talking about meditation on God's word. See, you 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 take the word of God, you memorize the word of God. When you're memorizing the word of God, see, sometimes when I memorize the word, I just, I just like that. See, the word of God, it keeps going back and forth in my mind. You see, the mind is kind of uh, repeating the word of God in my head. You see, then I start thinking about it. See, I start thinking about the word of God. Now, the more I think about the word of God, the more the Holy Spirit now takes that and unveil the revelation. See, that's what I like, oh, wow, I got it. Wow, this is so, you see, you've read this thing so many times, hundred times, you never got the revelation until you keep thinking about the word of God ever and over and over again. That's when you see God revealed that thing unto us. See, meditation and memorizing, this is so important. We need to be, for the, to prepare for this time, 
Like for example, somebody he got sick, <laughs> he got sick, that he don't memorize anything that relating to healing in the scripture. Oh, that is very risky. That is very risky. You've got to know, prepare for this time. When the sickness comes, guess what? The word of God is already there. Say, by whose stripes we were here. It's ringing in your head. You just say, no, I am not accepting that circumstances. I am not going down with this circumstance. I am not going down with this time. Say, because you've memorized, you've meditated on the word of God. And now it's not working on your behalf. So, so important. The meditating. So to have a successful Christian experience, we have to memorize and meditate on the word of God. I will share just uh, one example right here. Because this is where God revealed some amazing things to you. See, for example, in the book of Psalm, Psalm, 9, Psalm 119, verse 130. Guess what the Bible says? The unfolding of your word give light. <laughs> you see, it gives understanding to the simple. See, in the King James Version, it said, the entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, you see, so many times we are in the dark. But when the word of God comes, it shares the light so quickly. That's why the Bible says, my people are perished for lack of, uh, for, for lack of knowledge. You see, but it is the meditation and memorizing of the God's word that unveil the revelation of God's word. That shine the light over the storm. Over the circumstances we might be going through today. It's so <laughs> amazing. This is so cool. This is so good. This is so good. So, uh, in a way, meditation is the gateway to your heart. I'm going to show us. Ah, just bear with me. Imagine, I don't know what you can say. Imagine, uh, um, Imagine this is a this is just imagine just imagine <laughs> just put on your your spiritual imagination in a way see this as a box uh, this is a pen see this as a box as well so there are two boxes right here they join together all right we join them together but as a gateway this is your heart all right this is your heart and right here this is your soul this is your heart you see when you memorize the, the word of God see the word of God stays here. But uh, you need to meditate on the God's word. It's, it is the meditation of God's word because the meditation is the gateway to your heart. Meditation is the gateway to your heart. Now, remember they join together. Really, the part of the three dimension of a human being, we say we have uh, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, I'm just going to forget about the body at the, at the moment, but I'm going to deal with the, the soul and the spirit. Right now, this is your soul, and your soul has got your mind, your will, and your emotion, everything here. So when you read the scripture, see, you read the scripture through your body, your, your eyes, right? Your eyes, the body, you read it through that. So you download right here, the word of God right here, on your mind. This is what you memorize. It's sitting here, all right? See, the word of God will not work for you if the word of God is right here on your mind. It's not going to work. Now, meditation not transfer that. Because meditation is a great way to your heart. Because the more you meditate on the word of God, now the meditation on God's word open the door to your heart. Now all those what you've memorized right here, now being transferred into your heart. That is why the Bible says, the issue of life, is, it comes from what? From heart. Everything starts from the heart. It didn't say everything starts from your mind. You, it has to go through your mind. But for something to truly work for you, it has to go down to your spirit. So meditation now takes the word of God and open that door into the heart. So now that is when the word of God becomes so real. That is when you see the word of God. Oh, this is a revelation. You see, it is a revelation. Oh, wow. I've seen the after. I thought. Well, I've read this over and over again. I didn't know it was there. Guess what? It is the meditation that takes that. Open the door for God to work with. You see? But when you memorize the Bible, it stays on your mind. That is why sometimes you don't get any result. You see? You can't get results when you just memorize the Bible. You get results because it starts from the heart. So out of the abundance of the word, of the mouth speak it. Everything you, you say out is come from the heart. So your thought 
becomes your word. You see that? You see, what is word? Word is an expression of thought. What you think in your heart, you speak it out. When you speak it out, it becomes, it forms your environment. It forms your life. That's what happens out of the abundance of heart, mouth, speak it. As a man thinketh, so he is. See, it didn't say as a man thinketh alone. But it was, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So when you take the word of God, you keep loading this place in a time of calmness, in a time, a very quiet season, when you're not experiencing storm. This is why we need to take the word of God. So don't let us take the word of God for granted. Now you're memorizing everything right here. Now, the more you now kind of cultivate the habit of meditating on God's word, you are opening the door to your heart. Now, your, mouth, your heart now grab that. It's not working with that. It becomes so real. So that, that is why you know white is white. Color white is white. Black is black. Nobody can change that. If anybody take a, 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 the hockey, whatever, bat, whatever, the, uh, the bat, whatever, the, 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 the okay, you know what I'm I'm going to show you this is the black color. Well, you need to tell me this is white color. You'll be thinking, are you out of mind? I know this is black. They want to deceive you. No, this is not black. See, they can't tell you a black color is white color. How do you know that? You see, you have been born. See, you've been raised up along with this thing. So it, it dropped down to your heart. It becomes so real. Nobody can change your mind from that because you just know this is black color. The same thing you know, this is white color. I see the white color here today. You can't be telling me this is black. But that is what I see. I'm seeing black. I'm not talking about somebody who is colorblind like me. <laughs> sometimes I can't see the difference between the blue and the purple sometimes. But uh, what, uh, what I'm talking that's why I'm using the white and black. <laughs> so I, I, so I, can, uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> so it, it is the, it's, when you see the white, nobody can discourage it. Oh, no, 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 this is not white. This is black. No, no. Because, how do you know that? right from the baby right from where you are young you already know you've been taught in a way this is this is black this is white now it already don't doubt your spirit when they you when you are sleeping so deep somebody will tap you they wake you up oh it's tossing come on get up what color is this and they show you black you said this is black see it becomes so real to you the same thing with the word of god see when you memorize the word of god you meditate on the word of god you memorized it opens the door to your heart they, it become the word of God becomes so real. That is when you get answers. That is when you see God, the manifestation of God. You see, God only leads us by our spirit, not by the mind. That's Bible says, as many that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. God leads us through a spirit, not through the mind, because God is not mind. God is a spirit, and if he's going to lead his own, who are spirit, he's going to lead them through the spirit i hope you understand that <laughs> i hope you understand that so to have a successful christian experience see it starts with your heart out of a man say as you think it in your heart so are you see your thought is you your thoughts when you speak it shave your environment so if you don't like what you are going through right now you got to check what you say and what is on your heart. He you said, you cannot give what you don't have. You only have what you don't give. You cannot give what you don't have. If you want to give something, I'd love to give you 20 bucks. <laughs> I don't have 20 bucks. I can't give you 20 bucks, I'm sorry. But uh, if you have 20 bucks, you can give that $20. You see that? You can only give what you have. You can't give what you don't have. If you have the word of God in you, that is what is going to come out, out of you. That's why as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. If you are thinking, constantly loading yourself up with the word of God, when you speak in the midst of the storm, the only one that will come out is the word of God. But uh, if you are not full of the word of God, you are full of uh, you know those things that's coming all around you, guess what you're going to speak? You're going to speak the same thing the word has been speaking. Instead of speaking the word, declaring the word, about a situation. He said, I can easily tell. You can see many people give us away, give themselves away when they when they when they in, the, in a certain environment because you speak some certain things that are not in line with you. All of a sudden, I can catch that. Uh, have you been loading yourself with the word of God? He said, when you load yourself with the, the only thing that will come out is the things of God. So you cannot. I'm going to show. I'm just going to show this thing. Now let's look at this. 
And the, the, Jesus Christ said something amazing in the book of Luke. Oof, oof. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm running big. Oh, I'm running all. I just keep going with my time. My time is uh, is really kind of hard. I'm going to rush this part. <laughs> now, Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Let's watch this. Luke 6, verse 46, 45, sorry. The good person out of the good treasure of heart. The good person out of the good treasure of heart produces good. The evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. It is the good fruit can produce bad fruit. It is impossible. Only the good fruit produce the good fruit. But for the good fruit to have to produce the good fruit, it has to have the good fruit in it. The good fruit in it, right? <laughs> is it making sense? <laughs> it has to have the, the good fruit inside or the good seed. Let me put it as a, the good seed. The seed, really, the, what the Bible says, uh, the first are the seed, is the word of God. See, the word of God is a seed that you've been planting. So when you are reading the word, you are planting seed, constantly planting seed into our heart. So when situation comes, when the storm of life comes, guess what is the very first thing is going to come? Because you've been planting that seed, in your, so the seed is not growing. It's not growing. Now, your behavior, what you say out, guess what, is the fruit of of the seed that has been germinating within you for so long. It is, you, see, you think, you see, sometimes you don't think it's there. When you read the scripture, you think uh, this is not having any impact. See, the more you read the scripture, it's having so much impact in us that we do not even recognize that. But when the storm comes, you start seeing this, those, those things just manifesting in our lives. Because guess what? You've been loading yourself with the word of God. See, this, the seed has been germinating. The seed has been growing. Guess what? Now the seed is now producing fruit. Now, when you not speak, guess what? You speak the word of God over your situation. Nothing else comes out. I'm just going to stop. This, 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 this is going to be my last one. I've got one more to go, but I don't want to rush it. I'm just going to finish uh, the last, uh, um, the two points uh, next week. But I'm just going to end here. But uh, another thing I want us to, uh, to think about before I finish this stuff is... Uh, in the calm season, this is the time that we need to load ourselves with the Word of God. We need to start memorizing the Word of God. To fully experience the Christian experience, to fully have, to successfully have the Christian experience, guess what we need to do? We need to start meditating on the Word of God. I'm not going to show us, finally, I'm just going to read this. In the book of uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I don't know, I probably read this word over and over again, but guess what? Uh, it's the word of God. We can read it again. Romans chapter, chapter sorry, Joshua chapter 1 from verse 8. Guess what you say? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Isn't it interesting? He said, out of your mouth here. Yeah. Out of your mouth refers to confession. He keeps saying it. It, might, it should not depart from you. You see, there's something about confession. It helps. When you keep repeating, this confession is repetition, really. Confession is you are repeating the word of God over and over and over and over again. So it helps you because it opens up the gateway of your heart. Then you receive the word of God. It becomes so real. The word of God, when you repeat it over and over again, it becomes so real to you. That is what it's saying here. Do not let the book of this law shall depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so god is telling you the importance of meditation right here now watch it that you that you may observe and to and do according to all that is written in it for oh, for you shall make your way for then for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success isn't that amazing? Meditation say, comes first before you have a good success. Meditation comes first before you have what? Prosperous. So it is the meditation that opens doors. 
So we need to start meditating on God's word. The more we meditate on God's word, the more we create the habit or cultivate the habit of meditating on God's word. Guess what? It's the gateway. It opens the door to our heart and it becomes so real in our lives. So when this time comes, guess what? You are able to stand boldly and with confidence against this time. That is how you reign. That is how we reign over this time when this time comes. This is how we prepare for this time. You see, you cannot, that's why I say, to fully have a good success as a Christian or as a believer, we need to cultivate the habit of thought of meditation. Because after meditation, then Bible says, then you become prosperous. Then you become successful. 